Hello everyone and welcome to a new popper video. Yes, we asked you the last time to comment for Mango coming back and over a hundred people commented. So, well, we had to get you back. And this time we're gonna do the same. So if you want to see Mango back, please show us some love, write some head hearts in the comment and then we're gonna bring him back as much as you did. But now let's play some popper. Hello everyone, I'm back in Berlin to shoot some car market videos playing popper. Last time I checked the comments, I was overwhelmed by the good comments about this. So I said, Carl, I must come and we must play popper. I'm bringing a deck based around the card, Sunscape Familiar. Uh, this is a two mana zero three wall that discounts my cards. There's a lot of things you can do once you discount your cards. Most notably, you can play Mo Drifter uh, for only two mana for its evoke spell and then you can blink it with either ephemerate or ghostly flicker and then you even have a combo you can have two sunscape familiar one godfire's gift and ghostly flicker you blink the archaeomancer and the island and then boom 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 you gain infinite life and then if you have Sage Ron denies and you mill your opponent deck. While this might look like a lot of pieces, this deck draws a ton of cards and has control elements. So it's a cool deck. It's complicated, but it's a cool deck. Plus, March of the Machine has just been released and there's this very new card called Meeting of Minds that I think is gonna be great in Popper. Blue White Cogate and this deck will very easily pay zero mana to draw two cards, so I'm excited to try it out. Welcome back, and yes, if people keep building decks with Tronlands in Popper, I'm gonna keep playing them because they're awesome. And this deck actually won one of the biggest tournaments in Italy, the Popper Garden, just a few months ago. And it uses Tronlands just for making a lot of mana, but then we get to the combo aspect. That's really awesome because it's kind of a KCI slash Tron mashup. So you have Ash Ash Altar and Mirror Retriever, meaning if you have two Retrievers in the Altar, you can sack the Retriever to get the other Retriever from the graveyard, and then you loop them. But unfortunately, that is only playing more creatures. But when we have Golem Foundry, then we can use the casting of the Mirror Retriever over and over and over again. It gets infinite counters, that makes infinite golems, that makes infinite mana. And then, well, you just say go and overwhelm your opponent with a lot of those golems. And the rest is kind of just cycling through your cards. We have Chromatic Star and Chromatic Sphere and Deadly Dispute and Echo Wellspring and the energy thing and it's, you know, it's just basically drawing cards to your Tron lands and then to the combo and that's it. All right, Hyrule. Let's do it. Nine. Uh, I feel like this time rolling higher starting is very impressive. Oh, eight is so tough no, it's not that much. Popper is low format. Yeah, but we kind of play like, like interactive decks. Mm. I don't know about that. There's only one land here. I can go Island Preordain to look for a second one, but I'd rather not. Let's just go to six. This deck makes a lot of card advantage. We'll recoup the mulligan. I will um, ask for a mulligan. Now, mulliganing with Tron in a mono green modern deck was quite easy because it really had some easy form of rules you can follow because the games were so quick, right? But since we do play Popper, it's kind of different because you cannot just mulligan to the Tron lands because your payoff isn't as good. You need three combo cards, so you also have to find them while getting your lands. So we, if we look at this hand, we do have one Tron land, but we also have a lot of kind of cards in between. We have the Deadly Dispute and the Echo Wellspring. So I assume this one is gonna be a keep even though we kind of have nothing, like not everything at once, but we do have quite the selection of cards, so I think over the long run, we shouldn't die too quickly, so that's a keep. I will keep. Okay, this end is very good. The spider only looks like there's two lands. The Azorus Chancery is an extra land, so this hand is great. Let's just put back one of the two Ephemerates and submit. This one works much better. I am ready to start. Let's go. Best of luck. Island Ponder. Mm -hmm. It's not a Ponder, actually. It's Close a Pyrrhine. I, mean, I heard in Italian card names are the same. Oh! <laughs> All right, uh, you can go. All right, draw. I will play, to the surprise of absolutely nobody, or is this mine? Ooh! Go ahead. And no wind drop, okay. I'll play a 
somehow when we play, it's always some form of blue something against my design. I like it. Yeah. That's just how nature works. We, we totally choose the decks randomly with no intention. No, we didn't. We did not. <laughs> I think we're live. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is very important. Go ahead. I'll draw. Mm. All right. We'll play a Haunted Fangraph, which okay. is the honorary fourth time then. You know already now what this is, right? Yes, yes, yes. And then we're gonna play a energy refractor. Nice, that's a very good addition to Popper. Yeah. And I'll draw one. Yes. Go ahead. All right, I'll play the card that gives name to my deck. Sounds keep familiar. Mm -hmm. And then I'll play an Azorius Chancery Return an Island. So much value. And it's a turn. So familiar, for those who don't know, it's a 0 3 that discounts my blue spells. And my black spell. The green ones. Which you naturally don't play. No, zero. Unfortunately, we don't have a land, and I really would like to play the Echo Wellspring, but we have to make sure to find land, and of course, Tron for that matter, so we have to go for Ancient Spirits. I will have to filter a green mana. Sure. Go ahead. And I really hope in the future of any of this, I'll play a power Our plant. plant. All right. Sadly, shuffle cards to the bottom as they are not. Uh, go ahead. That's it. All right. Let's do some fun stuff, shall we? Okay. All right. For two mana, mm -hmm. I will evoke Mod Drifter yes. and uh, draw two cards first, and then it dies. Okay. So first, I draw two cards, but guess. And then it no, dies. no, 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 no. <laughs> guess what? It's not dying because I have Ephemerate. This is a very powerful combination which will make that I uh, draw two more cards. This one goes in exile, and uh, this one sticks around. So it doesn't actually die. Yeah. Do you like, do you like this combo? I mean, so far, I'm not impressed. Okay, okay. It's just some cards. I'll play an island. Do you play combo spells? Just asking for a friend. And then I will play a modern age. Oh yeah. For just one mana, I'll draw a card and discard a card. Last time I said this card is really bad, <laughs> then I got beaten by Modern Age. <laughs> I still don't like the card. Normally, this card would be very good in my deck, but I don't think this matchup is for it, so I'll just discard a God's Faro as Faithful. Mm. All right. And pass to you. So this is the time where we need the power. Mm. All right, I think we're gonna have to do the same one again. Sure. Tron, Tron, Tron. So disappointing. We do have another power plant, but also a map. And I think we have to kind of value now what's the land drop versus the map that gives us a different piece. And unfortunately, I think the land drop is more worth it, even though that doesn't get me any closer to Tron. And I'll choose a another power plant. Nice. I should have sewn the tower on the last one. Oh, there was both last yeah, time? Yeah, there was both. That's, a, that's what we call mistake in the uh, professional circuit. Typical Tron mistake. <laughs> and then we play the second power plant and an Echo Wellspring, which draws it. Actually, do you want to tell the viewers why uh, you shouldn't have taken the tower before? If I would have taken the tower, then the power plant was in the next four. Yes. And I would have gotten Tron. No, no, no. <laughs> this, this is an itch. Like, let's, let's teach something. Let's teach something. <laughs> okay, yes. You want to do the tower last because it adds three mana. Exactly. So you tap all your mana to get to the tower. Then when you play that in the last land, you have three mana instead of two. I could have had made five mana instead of four, which obviously makes a one mana difference. But now I am sadly have only two, which is the worst. So. You drew a card? I drew a card. That's so little. Look how many I'm going to draw now. Mm. Right, let's begin with two in my upkeep. Yes. That's just a taste of what's gonna happen next. And then I'll uh, do, go to my draw step, my main phase, and I'll discard a card. Cards in hand? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't wanna know. <laughs> All right. Magic is fun when you draw cards. I will start with uh, another familiar to make my spell now cost two colorless. To make my blue spell cost two colorless less. Colorless, less. So I, I will begin with a one mana Seagate Oracle. Mm -hmm. Look at the top two cards, one in it, one at the bottom. And then, what should I do? I think I'll do this. I will tap a blue and a white card to play Meeting of Minds. This is a new card. Convoke, draw two cards. Two, three. Zero mana divination? 
Not bad. Oh, uh, yeah, I want that. That sounds nice. What a card. Zero mana draw two, like... That's great. I used to be a popular card once, right? What's that? One blue mana, tap four creatures, draw three cards. Never heard. It's very old. It's like Rise of Ujazi. Not that old. Uh, I have <laughs> nothing to do here. I'll just play another Seagate Oracle. Mm. And uh, I'll pass to you. So you have nothing to do, you say? Oh, mm. I think I go to this card, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, go. I'm pretty sure that a tower would be a good side. <laughs> so let's play a okay. Grotto. It's Grunt. <laughs> nope. And then I would like to play a mirror retriever. Okay. Does that happen? Yeah, retriever results. Good, you go. Uh, I, got, I got nothing to do on the turn. I know. Untap. No ephemerate. So I just draw a card. Okay. Get my powerful modern age. You saved up for it. The two, three fly. Bang. Well, I'll begin by attacking with uh, the creatures that can attack. Yeah. So that's four damage. Accepted. Down to 16. If you blink the modern age, you just get it as a front side. So sick. Then you can loot again. Instead, I will play one mana Seagate Oracle again. Okay. So this is basically a much better ponder. Okay, and then I will play another island. Mm -hmm. I'll tap two of them. Mm -hmm. And I'll play in Archaeomancer. Mm. Returning Ephemerate. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll pass to you. At the end of your turn. Yes. I will channel one black and cast a Deadly Dispute, okay. sacrificing the Wellspring and drawing a card for this. Okay, draw a card for Wellspring. And then I would like to pay one mana and prohibit your Deadly Dispute. It is prohibited. Go. Do, do, do. Draw. I still didn't find any tower. All right, let's try being lucky. I'll tap three. Yes. And play another deadly dispute, sacrificing the refractor. Okay, I will um, play ephemerate on Archaeomancer. Yeah. Float a blue. Yes. And I will return prohibit. Yes. And I'll play prohibit. Yes. That works. And then we play another Wellspring. Okay. And draw. Okay. Another mine. Okay, double, ba double bear. Go ahead. Okay, untap. This is the, the famous loop Ephemerate Archaeomancer, which will let me just return the Ephemerate yes. in upkeep. So, how do I start? It's gonna be a simple preordain to start. Both on the bottom. And draw. That's okay. One blue floating a white. I'll evoke one drifter. I'll draw two cards. And then I will ephemerate before it dies with the white mana floating. So I'll draw two more cards. Okay. I'll play Island. I'll play in another Archaeomancer. I will return. All right, so I drew the Sage's Rodanizen. So I only need Ghost of Flicker, and then I have an infinite mill loop with two Sunscape Familiar, Archaeomancer, Sun Rodanizen, and a basic island. But in the meanwhile, let's just beat down with what I have. And then I will simply attack you <clears> with <throat> uh, all the people that can attack. That's seven. That's seven damage. I'll go to nine. And then I should go to this card. Then. In the graveyard. Go! Mm -hmm. I mean, I could technically try, which I don't think is enough. But maybe you let it go. So you go for Al Ashnad Altor? Mm -hmm. Altar? Yeah, we said that uh, because of the two um, Sunscape Familiar, I can just pay two and prohibit your Ashnad Altar. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm gonna do. That's enough. I don't have another one. Zip. All right, good game, good game. I was uh, the ghostly flicker away to combo, but yeah. I guess it didn't matter. Sideboarding here should be very easy because we bring in duress because we want to take Andreas' mean and hateful counter spells 
and then we also gonna bring the Nihil Spellbomb because exciting cards that he could get back with Achaeomancers is very important, especially if those could be counter spells. Now, where I'm not sure is the makeshift munition because I kind of could destroy his creatures that he blinks, but that only sets up the thing when I'm like in the point of having the creatures and the artifacts anyways. So I'm kind of a low on that one, even though it might be a board, but I still am gonna be fine with okay, it. Okay, sideboarding. Uh, Dust to Dust is very good in this matchup. You can exile Golden Foundry, you can exile Altar Ashnod, so that's good. Uh, of course, Negate as well, and also Revoke Existence. The bad cards, in my opinion, are Snap, because there's nothing to bounce from your opponent. Sure, you can bounce your things to make some mana, but that's not as exciting. And then I'm gonna take out the God's Pharaoh's Faithful. Uh, because I don't think the um, life matters in this matchup, so let's just do this change for now. Number two. Let's go! I'll start. Hopefully this one... We find Tron. You don't play land at a time. My hand for game two is basically the same as game one. We have an in-between of one Orza land and a lot of card selection and an altar and the mirror for the combo. So again, I don't think you can mulligan those. There's no real pressure for me to do anything very quickly. So I do want to have the stability of having some land, but I also have some combo pieces. So I think in the long run, we're gonna be fine. I think I will try. Another seven card hand that is not good enough. Five lands, two spells, this deck needs to get action going, needs to find Sunscape Familiar. Unfortunately for me, this deck is cannot function with just lands and spells. Like you need to draw the enablers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to six here. All right, let's keep this one. This one is very good. I have Sunscape Familiar, I have Azor's Chancery. Perfect hand. And this is a keep. It's a keep! You can go. I will start with a Pluto Mine. Nice. Well, I will start with my favorite Ponder. It's actually a pretty day. Yeah. Should have been in the shuffling video, the way you make like the ripping sound. Cluck, cluck. Yeah, I like to do that. It's very strong. With Katana's laser it works very well. <laughs> Go. All right, draw. <laughs> it's so good, I tell you. If you haven't watched it, if you have some time, watch the full video. Yeah. I'm gonna cycle one of the chromatic spheres, because I play one, and then use it, and then play a chromatic star. Go. I will undo my mulligan with a Azorius Chancery. No. Because I'm on the draw, I don't have to discard. Impressively great. Go. Draw. Well, I'm gonna do my own form of divination. Okay, that's we're wrong. Draw one from the star because it's sacrificed. Sick. And then we're gonna draw two and get a treasure. In the market, we call this Ancestor Recall. Uh, with, the, the, with the treasure. Because yeah. you get the mana back immediately. And then I'm gonna use the treasure. Wow to cast another Chromatic Sphere and pass the turn. Wow, no lands? No. That's very unlucky. Okay, let's do this. I have my namesake card, Sunscape Familiar, an island, and I pass to you. We'll draw. All of this isn't great, so we'll make a green. Yeah, why not, right? All right. Since we're there. Uh, hmm. Yeah, and you know what? We'll take an altar. Okay, so you have another. Did you draw a land this turn? Yeah, I did draw a land. What did you draw? I drew a grotto. Scry. Okay, that was easy. No, no. Oh, it's not easy? It's, ne <laughs> it's never easy. And I will cast a wellspring. Okay. Which draws another one. And then I have to discard. All right. Foundry. I go. Please, sir. I have uh, not the best lands at my disposal. Tell me about it. Yeah, right? <laughs> I think I have to do this. So I'll play another Sunscape Familiar. Mm -hmm. And then I'll play, I'll pay one and a white, and I'll draw two cards with Meeting of Minds. Yeah. And then I'll play an Azorus Chancery mm. and pass. I could have gone Mold Drifter and Evoke to draw four cards plus two more. So that sounds like super exciting, right? But I think sticking a second Sunscape Familiar, it is better in this matchup. As Sora of most likely will not be able to interact with them. And that will make me be much better later in turns. Come on, Tron Lands. <sighs> All right. Um, 
We're gonna do the ancestral thing again. Okay. <laughs> One. <laughs> and fourth. <laughs> And two more. One, one. And the treasure. And the treasure. So I found the second Ozo's Mine, which is still only one piece. But the question is now, do I play the map or do I play the refractor? Because if I play the map, I kind of want to make sure it resolves now. But I don't really want to use it because I want to wait until I find the second Tron Land to find the third one. If I get one now, my chance of getting the third Tron Land is much lower. So I think even though it's mana inefficient, I will play the map and then wait for it. it Looks weird, but I think that's the right play to get to Trong the quickest possible. So we're gonna play the fourth mine. Okay. No shame. And we're playing Expedition Map. Okay. Which then leads me to have eight cards. We're gonna get rid of the kills. Will this be a, a video where Tron never gets to Tron? Maybe. Any of the games? <laughs> I heard legends that it sometimes happens. It never happened to me, so I, I don't can't confirm it, but... Yeah. I have one million choice here. I'm gonna go with uh, Dawnbringer Cleric here and just not do too much, because Dawnbringer Cleric actually manages to stop my opponent combo with uh, Ephemerate, as they can go uh, Mirror Retriever to sacrifice you to get back the second Mirror Retriever or, you know, any card, and I can Ephemerate it to exile the card I target. So I think that I like to take this shot to resolve a Dawnbringer Cleric. It doesn't do too much now, but it will be good later turns when I have Ephemerate. Okay, let's do, let's start doing some fun things over here. One blue. One drip. Yes. One draw two. One white. Ephemerate. I'll play an island, and then I will play a Dawnbringer Cleric and exile the Golden Foundry. It's gone. And then I have eight cards, so I'll go to this card. And I'll pass to you. Excellent. No crack expedition now. Mm, first find what we're looking for. Right. Mm. We're gonna cast a energy refractor. To begin, okay. That works? Yeah, you draw a card. Come on. Hey! Okay. And then it's your turn. Okay. At the end of your turn, I will play, I will cycle an Ash Barons. Yes. And I grab a planes. On top. Yeah. One drifter, uh, ephemerate on one drifter. Mm -hmm. Draw two. Mm -hmm. Draw a step. Mm -hmm. So many cards. I'll uh, attack for one. You do, do that. Twenty. Nineteen. Nineteen. Pay three. And I will play Dust to Dust on your Energy Refractor and Treasure Token. So I will exile two artifacts from the battlefield. Uh, we'll use this for black. Okay. Attempt to cast. The dead you sacrifice. Okay, I will uh, negate your deadly dispute. It's negated. And this fizzles. Yep. No targets available. Pass the turn. We're gonna get the combo! The combo? You mean the, the third Tron land? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Not the case. A little bit afraid. Nothing bad can happen with my blue mana up. Draw. Well, I guess you play a power plant. I do. Okay. This is. Now I have to assess mana. What do we do with 11? Pull them on. Oh, be so good. Let's start with. Three mana. And Ashmut. <gasps> Resolves. So now that we get Negate out of the problem, mm. retrieve them. Okay, so when it dies, you return an artifact. Yes. And then? I would like to sac retriever for mana okay. to get the kinsmith. You have two colorless mana in your pool. You will have to get the kinsmith back. Wish I exiled it first instead of the golden foundry. Actually even thought about it. Um, yeah, I think I have to do this. 
I will uh, ephemerate the Dombrogger cleric mm -hmm. and exile the Kingsmith. It is exiled. Okay, so you have two colorless and I have one blue floating. I will cast a um... second mirror retriever. Yeah. Okay, results. Then I would like to pass through phase combat. Yeah, I will uh, simply cycle the Nash Barons. Mm -hmm. So I'm fully tapped out. I think some of the games I can win just slamming Foundry and then casting the artifact spells because then I can put pressure with the golems. And I think if I would have had three lands on turn three, I would just slam the Foundry because then I can start like a different game plan where Andrea gets punished for the counter spells here. But unfortunately, it was not in my arsenal, so we're gonna have to play the combo routes. So cycle Ash Barons, and uh, yeah, you can go through second main. Mm. Uh, Three mana. Now I don't need to be in second main, but it right, sure. Uh, we'll get the count foundry. All right, so and you have a, do, 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 do. a combo going. Let's explain it. We sacrifice the retriever. So you have two mana. Yeah, uh, two mana. We get the retriever. Yes. There's a clan retriever and that triggers the foundry because I cast an artifact spell, and then we do that over and over because it always replaces. So that means this basically has infinite. Counters. Yes. So this is infinite counters, and you have infinite counters on the on this. I'm sure Carl will love to edit this. <laughs> okay. So now the question is, I could technically um, break the combo by drawing another card. Yeah, you have infinite mana as well now, because every golem can give you two mana. Yes. And it's your turn. So I'll try to, I don't know, untap, see what I can do. Let's start with uh, Ephemerate on Demo Drifter. Now. Can do that bad. Draw two. You could also gain two life. No, 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 no. Draw for turn. Okay. Yeah. I could gain infinite life, but I sideboarded out the zero fours. Isn't that pretty strong? Because well, no, you always have... make more infinite life than I can. So I have to pass my turn mm. with a set amount of counters. Mm. And then on your turn, you can always overgo those counters. Right. So this is the one time, because I have to set my infinite damage, yeah. sorcery speed, Yeah. Yeah, for you sure. can outplay with. Of course. The, that's yeah, yeah. fun. I like it. So maybe for game three, I will bring back the God's Faithful. I have to draw exactly the two cards I'm missing here. So let's start. Uh, one white colorless. Sorry, one, one white floating. I'll play Archimancer. Yeah. I'll return the uh, Meetings of the Mind, mm -hmm. which I'll play tapping two cards. Draw two cards. Still one white. One white floating. Mm -hmm. Draw all the counter spell now. Yeah, I will play another white floating, so two white floating. I'll play a Seagate Oracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't do it. I found the guy, but I didn't find Ghostly Prison. All right, so yeah, infinite attacks will beat me. Eh, tough game. Good game, well played. As pointed out uh, by Torov in game two, I'm gonna replace one uh, uh, card for God for us, Hateful. Infinite life might actually end up mattering. Don't know too much about this, but let's let's go for it. Let's let's trust my opponent. Something that she actually never do. Let's go game three. I'm on the play. This was a good game. I feel like I had the cards to win. Classic blue white gaming. On the play, two lands preordained. Let's keep this end. It's a little bit sketchy, but let's keep this. All right, this is a keep for me. Oh, I mean, that hand is crazy good, right? We do have two Tron pieces, we do have some mana fixing and the Deadly Dispute. So if we draw the third land, I think we're good to go. All right, I see potential in this hand. All right, I'll start with the Italian Italian Ponder. Ah. And I'll bottom both of these cards. Predestinare. Predestinare, yes. Predestinare. Go. Draw. I will play a power plant and a chromatic steel. Okay. And then we'll pass. On top? Go ahead. Draw. I'll play island and I'll pass to you. Draw. Oh, hello. Well, my first plan was actually to play something on turn two, but now that I have natural Tron, I have tech trademark, we don't really need to play anything because two islands from Andrea kind of display just any counter spell and I don't want my spells to get countered. I want him to be punished for not using the mana and then next time when we have seven mana we can cast multiple spells and he kind of has to choose what to counter and it's going to be much more uncomfortable for him. We'll play an Orzus Mine. Okay. One of the many. I 
think it's just your turn. I don't know anything fantastic. Uh, we'll play an island. Is that good or bad? And I'll play a very sad evoking drifter. This is very sad. That happens. Only desperation situations here. And I'll pass you. I will psycher a polluted mile. All right, that's also pretty, pretty bad. No, don't no. power me. No! <laughs> I drew the tower last turn, so I didn't need to do anything. That's okay. So I also have kind of the feeling that A, I realized you don't have counter spells right now at your disposal. Mana, you and B, yes, you're also missing a lot of white for the remove two artifacts thing. Which, in combination, both of them is very enjoyable, I have to say. So let me see what we can do here. We'll tap my mine for two colorless mana because I have Tron. And okay. If you have those lands, you can make more mana. Very good. Thank you. Actually, so we're gonna seven. float seven. Who are we kidding? And then we play a Golem Foundry. Three. An Altar. This is a counter. One. And a Star. All right, quick, somebody give me a Mystic Gate. Go. On top and draw. Yes. That's the, um, the card I wanted the most. A basic planes. I'll play a Sunscape Familiar. Mm -hmm. Then I'll pass to you. Unfortunately, you can't make a Golem because it costs three counters. I kind of do everything, but at the same time, I kind of have nothing because we do have Tron, but we're kind of restricted on the colored manners. And all the cards in my hand that I want to play cost colored mana. So I can set up the altar and I can set up the golden foundry, but I don't have the combo quite yet. But I also don't really have the possibility to, to get there. So it's still going to be a long game, even though we have the natural Tron. But I think it's going to be fine. Don't, don't get me wrong, we're quite a far advanced, but there's still some problems we have to overcome. Let's float two and sacrifice this for... Let's try black. Let's draw. Then let's use the black, and uh, let's not use the black. We still have a colorless in the black and cast the retriever. Resolves. Okay. Then I actually will use the black and cast the dirt. Yep, that resolves. Yeah, I feel like I'm very afraid of this card, so we're gonna take it. And let's do this. Bye. We still have colorless floating. Okay, so black. we'll make a black okay. draw because of the star. Still, we're kind of really restricted on the colored mana, so I have to get the chromatic star from the graveyard. And here's the point. I actually do think that if Andrea counters the star, we're in a really bad spot because then we have actually no source of colored mana and all the colored spells in hand. But the question is, is Andrea gonna counter the star? Which, if I put my hand face up, he definitely would, but he doesn't know that, so he, there is actually a decent chance he might be too afraid to use the negate to counter the star, and that's where we're gonna get him. Because then, once the star is off, we get the dead in dispute and draw more cards to hopefully find the colored mana sources. Then we're gonna sec the retriever. Two colorless. Um, Just two colorless. Yeah, we have two colorless, and we get back the star. Yes. That goes to my hand. Yes. Then I'm gonna cast a sneaky spell bomb. Spell bomb. Which, uh, or you can use this. One colorless, so it's good to four. Resolves. And a star. Okay, so you empty the mana. If you want to negate that. No, 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 you can have it. Okay. At the end of the day, I chose to not counter anything because I have to think about my uh, plan first. I have these uh, draw two spell that I need to cast in order to get things going. I'm losing this game, Torov has Tron, has everything he needs, so I need to find my own plan first, then, you know, this negate maybe can be used even better later turn, so let's just go for the elimination end of turn and just be more mana efficient. Then it's your turn. All right, end of turn, I will convoke this meeting of minds, draw two cards. That's an instant. Yeah. In response, I will make three, cycle star, get a black. I guess because Spell Bomb is kind of cute, we'll make a golem. Okay. And then sacrifice the golem from the dispute. Right. I still have one colorless floating. Yes. Um, draw two cards. The golem runs. I'll draw two. One, two, and get a treasure. Yes, so the golem two. comes and goes. All right, all good. And, and now I have one colorless. Sure. Which I don't want to use. All right, so I draw two cards. Yes, please. 
-hmm. Then I take my turn. Mm -hmm. On top and draw. All right, let's go. I'll start with a God Ferris Faithful, mm -hmm. which is sideboarded back in the deck. We'll see if it's gonna worth its lot, but I don't know. <laughs> and then I'll play an Archeomancer, gaining a life. If it resolves, it does resolve. I would like to target the um, dust to dust in the graveyard. I think I will forbid that by sacrificing the spell bomb, but not paying for black. Okay. I'll go island and pass to you. I'll draw. Yes. I will play another mine and then tap six. Okay. I mean, that's tap three. Three. No. Okay. Colorless. And cast another altar. That's fine for me. Boundary. No boundary. And add another two colorless to cast another altar, going up to four counters. Okay. And it's your turn. End of turn, I will tap three creatures and draw two cards. That resolves. All right, all right. Good performance by this card today. Draw two. End of turn, I will also cycle an Ash Barons. Yeah, at that point, we're gonna respond with the dispute. We'll make a token from the Foundry again, sacrifice the token, use the treasure for black. Uh, that means we get the treasure back. Yep, and draw two. Draw two. I also gained a life with the God Forest Faithful. So I'm on 22 because of the meeting of mines yes. and I grab a planes. Planes in my hand, untap and draw. Let's begin with a modern age. Draw a card. I'll discard a Mortuary Mire. Mm -hmm. I'll gain a life. Ooh. I should remember before resolving the card, but Friendly matches, will you let me gain a life? It's fine. Also, I don't think it matters besides infinite or zero. No, I'm no, just for the viewers at home. Mango forgot a life. Ah, what a shit. have gained one life. Mythic invitation to a super pro misses a trigger. Okay, then I will play my Archeomancer for three mana and I'll bring back the Meeting of Minds. Mm. Then I'll cast it immediately for free. So it's not divination with a one two. <laughs> yeah. Now I draw two cards. Yes. Planes and pass the turn. Okay, so here I could have gone uh, Island, Seagate, Oracle and pass the turn with Island up. Maybe to dig for a Prohibit. But I think it's better actually to play Planes and pass. When Torov duresses me and picks a Negate, I can go White, Ephemerate on the Archeomancer, get back Negate and still Negate up. So this Planes plays around the duress. Draw. So here you see Dora is actually a very good cyber card, right? But it does have some downsides because it's not this, I play Dora and it definitely gets countered. We know now that Andrea has slot for one counter spell because there's a blue open. But Dora doesn't mean that he actually has to cast a spell. So if he has two counter spells and high or a counter spell and something that blinks something, right? He doesn't need to have the counter spell mana open because he doesn't use it. So that means the rest is actually not quite favored here because we have to spend one of the colored manas, which we're very restricted on, to not get any result that we want. So we have to play another spell that Andrea needs to counter and then we go into the combo. I will tap two to cast an energy reflector, which triggers the phone. That resolve, I can't counter that. Draw a card. Yeah. Then I will use the treasure for a black and cast a dress. You can choose between these two. It's funny, I inter the interview, I, I said exactly this scenario. I also said it in the interview that the rest is not good against two cards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's take ephemerate because that's basically a glorified negate. And then we're gonna make two mana, one of them green to cast. Well, uh, Negate cannot counter a Retriever, so I think I have to counter that. Right. What happens? Haha, -ha, you fool! You ran into my trap of casting an Retriever. It's okay, you will not find the uh, Retriever. Two. I'll take the Retriever. <laughs> the rest doesn't matter. <sighs> Um, so you have infinite already, because you have another retriever there. So now we have infinite mana, right? And infinite golems. Infinite counters. <laughs> That's okay, stop. Is that, a, is that it up? I'll draw a card. Okay. Uh, You'll tap any mana? No. 
Actually, I'm any color because of this as well. I'll pay a blue and a white. Psychochromatic sphere. Okay. Doesn't even matter. Draw, psycho another sphere. Draw, psycho a star. I mean, also doesn't matter. Draw, play a vector. Draw, and we'll put a counter each time. Okay, okay. Just say, uh, star, draw. I'm not sure what I want. Mm -hmm. So I play my land for the turn. I think I just want to be sure, for whatever reason, and sacrifice the second retriever hmm. to get a spell bomb. That's good. That's a strong play. Put the spell bomb into play. I'll pass the two. Yeah, actually, this one also stops my combo. All right, let's go. I'll take a draw, and my chances are very thin right now. Draw for turn. Would have been good last turn. Uh, draw again. I'll discard and uh, there's Chancery. And then I'll go for a um, Seagate Oracle. But yeah, it should cost two mana. I gain a life, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's it. Woohoo! I came to Arof. The, yeah, strong, uh, strong deck for sure. This is a nice match. All right, Hoffel, congratulations. You once again defeated me. But it was a good match. I think it was very close. I think the viewers uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, actually, friends, the level of die was really high today. And if you want to see more high-level plays and content of Pauper, of course, with Mango here, write some hearts in the comments for Mango. And hopefully, we're going to see you soon.